Okay, hey guys, we're gonna be doing lesson one um, of chapter nine. And chapter nine is um, about doing um, operations with fractions. So lesson one is called um, Use Models to Add Like Fractions. Um, if you just follow along with me in your book, I'm gonna go through all of this with you. And then at the end, you'll log into my math and do the um, self-check, okay? So we'll do the whole lesson together and then you do the self-check on your own to see if you understood. So it says, lesson one, hands-on, use models to add like fractions. A unit fraction has a numerator of one. It is one of the equal parts of the whole. Fractions that have the same denominators are called like fractions. You can use models to add like fractions. So the first example says, Abigail was playing a board game with her friends. There are five game pieces. There is a red piece, a blue piece, a yellow piece, a green piece, and a purple piece. What is the total fraction of the pieces that are yellow, green, or purple? So what you're going to do is find one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth. And at number one, it says model three one-fifth fraction tiles. So it shows you right there a fifth, a fifth, and a fifth. One's yellow, one's green, one's purple. Each game piece represents a unit fraction. So it says add the like fractions. There are three one-fifth fraction tiles altogether. So one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth equals three-fifths. Three-fifths is the sum of the three unit fractions of one-fifth. So the total fraction of game pieces that are yellow, green, or purple is, and you're going to write right here, three fifths. So be sure you write that in your book too. All right, moving on to the next page. This is example two. It says not all fractions are unit fractions. You can decompose or break down a fraction into a sum of unit fractions. So you might have to find three eighths plus two eighths. If you first model three eighths, that's the same as one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth right here. Three eighths is the sum of three unit fractions of one eighth. Now model two eighths. One eighth plus one eighth plus one eighths. There's the three eighths that you already had. Then one eighth plus one eighth are your two new eighths. So if you count all of those up, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five eighths. Count the total number of one eighth tiles, which is what we just did. Notice that the parts being joined are part of the same whole and each unit fraction is the same size. There are how many one eighth tiles? One, two, three, four, five. There are five one eighth tiles. So three eighths plus two eighths equals five eighths. All right, so number one down here on it, talk about it says, Hold on, let me make sure I hit record. I did, okay, sorry. All right, number one says, identify structure. The fraction 5 eighths can be considered as the sum of 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth. It could also be considered as the sum of 3 eighths plus 2 eighths. What other two ways can you think of to get 5 eighths as a sum? So let's think of all the ways we could get 5. We could have 1 Oh, got to switch pens. This one's not working, of course. We could have one eighth plus four eighths. That's a way to get five. We could have, like they said up here, two eighths plus three eighths. That's a way to get five. We could do three eighths plus two eighths, which is just the inverse of that one. Or we could do four eighths eighths plus one eighth, which is just the inverse of that one. So all of those ways would give us five eighths. Now, I hope my pen isn't bleeding through. Eh, not too bad. So we'll deal with that when we get to the next page. All right. Over here on page 563, we're going to practice what we've learned. Model the sum using fraction tiles. Draw the model, then add. So if we are drawing the model, how many equal areas are we going to have? We're going to know that by looking at our denominator. So we're going to need sixths. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to just draw a little rectangle. I'm going to divide it into six equal areas. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm going to say one sixth, color that in, plus four sixths. So then I'm going to shade in four more. Equals how many do we have shaded in all together now? One, two, three, four, five sixths. Okay. Number three, four eighths plus two eighths. I'm going to do the same thing, except this time I'm going to divide my rectangle into eight equal areas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not equal, but close enough. Four eighths. So I'm going to shade in four eighths first. Three, four, and then I'm going to add to that two eighths. Okay, now I'm going to count how many I have total. One, two, three, four, five, six eighths. There we go. So now my new answer is six eighths. There we go. Okay, anytime during this video, if there's something you're not understanding, obviously you can stop it and rewind it and watch it again. That's the beauty of us doing this on a video. If you miss it the first time, you can watch it again. All right, number four. The table shows the sums of several like fractions. Study the pattern in the table. Write a rule you can use to add like fractions without using models. So let's see. Um, we've got one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth equals three fifths. We've got three eighths plus two eighths equals five eighths. Then we have one tenth plus one tenth plus seven tenths equals nine tenths. Okay, so what rule could we use to add the like fractions without using models? Well, let's think about numerators and denominators here. The denominators are the bottom numbers. Do those bottom numbers ever change when we're looking at these? They don't. When you're adding like fractions, the denominators never change. So the rule would be you only add the numerator and the denominator stays the same. Okay, we're gonna use that rule from exercise four to find one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. Well, if I remember that my denominators all stay the same, I know that my bottom number is going to stay a four, and then I'm going to only add the numerators. So one plus one plus one, very simply, is three. So one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth is three fourths, okay? Down here on the bottom on six and seven, our directions say, Write each fraction as a sum of unit fractions. Then write an e equation to decompose the fraction in a different way. So if we're writing 7 eighths as unit fractions, we know that our units are going to be, and we're going to look at our denominator to find this out, our unit fractions are going to be eighths. So I want to show 7 eighths. So I'm going to say 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus one eighth, plus one eighth. Let's see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need one more, plus one eighth. So now I'm showing seven eighths. And my directions say to write it a different way. So let's think of different ways that we could get seven. We could say one eighth plus six eighths. We could say two eighths plus five eighths. We could, oops, I don't need a plus sign here. I need a comma. We could say three eighths plus four eighths. And then we could go back and do the inverse of all of those by saying um, five eighths plus two eighths, six eighths plus one eighth, four eighths plus three eighths. Okay. All right. So on number seven, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to break it down into unit fractions first. And then we're going to come up with some different ways to show five tenths. So the first thing I'm going to do is show 5 eighths using unit fractions. So I'm going to say 1 tenth plus 1 tenth plus 1 tenth plus 1 tenth plus 1 tenth. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tenths. Now I'm going to think of other ways to get 5 tenths. So I could say 1 tenth plus 4 tenths. I could say 2 tenths plus 3 tenths. 
I could say the inverse of that, three tenths plus two tenths. And I could say the inverse of that, four tenths plus one tenth. Okay, so if you have any questions on this first page, go back and re-watch me do that page. But for now, we're gonna turn the page and do the rest of the lesson where my pen has bled through. So we'll just do our best. Luckily, you've got a clean page, I don't. It's kind of hard for Miss Milam to find some good pens in the house. I'm gonna have to find a better one before I do the next lesson. All right, number eight, use number sense. Claire walked one third mile on Saturday and one third mile on Sunday. How many miles did she walk in all? So when I see in all, that, no, that tells me that I'm going to add. So I'm gonna look at what two things I have. So I have one third plus one third, and I know that I keep my denominator as three and I add my numerator to get two. So one third plus one third is two thirds. Super simple. All right, number nine. Miguel cut a cantaloupe into eight slices. He ate one slice and his friend ate four slices. What fraction of the cantaloupe did they eat? Well, let's think about part over whole, okay? because that's how fractions are, part over whole. Well, how many slices were in the whole cantaloupe? There were eight, okay? Let's see, um, Miguel ate one of the eight slices and his friend ate four of the eight slices. So, one eighth plus four eighths equals five eighths. All right, number 10. There are 12 children at lunch. Six children are eating apples, four children are eating grapes, and two children are eating celery. What fraction of the children are eating fruit? Well, for this one, we have to know which of those foods are fruits and which are vegetables. So if I look through here, I'm going to find apples, grapes, and celery. Well, we all know that celery is a vegetable. So is this any information I need to know? Nope. Don't even need to know about celery. I just need to know about these apples and the grapes. So part over whole again, keep that in mind, part over whole. All right, there are 12 children in the whole, so I'm gonna put 12. Six of them are eating apples and four of them are eating grapes, four out of 12. So then if I add that up, I've got six plus four is 10 and I keep that 12. So 10 twelfths of the children are eating fruit. Number 11, write three different ways to decompose nine tenths into a sum. So just three different ways to get nine tenths. Basically, if you start and say one tenth plus eight tenths, you could say two tenths plus seven tenths. You could say three tenths plus six tenths. You could say four tenths plus five tenths. And then if you go backwards, it could also say five tenths plus four tenths, six tenths plus three tenths, seven tenths plus two tenths, and eight tenths plus one tenth, okay? And then it says, number 12, when adding like fractions, why is the numerator the only part of the fraction that changes? Well, I'm not gonna write all this out, but I'm just gonna tell you. Let's say you were adding bananas, right? You had four bananas in this stack, three bananas in this stack. You would say four bananas plus three bananas is seven bananas. You can think of a denominator like a banana. So if you had four fifths and three fifths, you would just add your four and your three, just like you wouldn't say bananas plus bananas. You're not gonna say fifths plus fifths, okay? All right, we did all of those pages together. A good thing for you to do to check yourself would be to one, do the homework page and have your parents check you before you do the self-check. If you think, Miss Milam, this is so simple that I do not need any extra practice, go straight on to Schoology. No, not it's not on Schoology, I apologize. Go straight into Clever, click on McGraw-Hill and go to our math book and do the assignment. Now this one you're only gonna be able to do on Monday. So please be sure that you do the self-check for this one in my math on Monday. You cannot work ahead with math, okay? So 
do that. Let me know if you have any questions and I will be more than happy to help you. Now, before I do lesson two, I'm going to find a better pen. Um, see you tomorrow with lesson two's lesson. Goodbye and thank you.